the sun Who cares that it makes plants grow Who cares what it does since you broke my heart Hello, uh, I recorded this video a few days ago with my friend. We go over some basics in the climate debate. So if you're a seasoned reader of the main blogs, then you probably won't get much from it. However, the issue of a failure to communicate and have a dialogue between the two sides in the climate debate is forever being raised. Um, so at least we did that. That conversation is really important. And what should happen now is basically that I should be replaced by Matt Ridley or um, Andrew Montford, Ben Pyle, Nigel Lawson, Bjorn Lomborg, Anthony Watts, Steve McIntyre, Donald Laframboise, Judith Curry, Joanne Nova. And, and my friend is replaced with uh, Michael Mann, Lewandowski, um, Al Gore, Emma Thompson, Kevin Schmidt, um, Chris Mooney, Lily Cole, Regenda Paturi. Maybe not Regenda Pachuri. Will it ever happen? Roy Spencer is a climatologist at the University of Alabama. He's skeptical about man causing global warming. Uh, to debate him, we have an empty chair. So, Roy, get lost. Go away if you would take a seat over there and let's welcome NASA scientist Gavin Schmidt. You know, I'm here because you asked me to come on and talk about the science, and I am totally happy to do that. But I don't need to be arguing with people just to make good TV. Thank you, Gavin Schmidt. And if you would give the chair up again, let's bring Roy Spencer in to reply to what you said. Or stay if you like. I'm not interested. Uh, right, well, I'm going to talk directly to the camera for a moment. Hello. Um, so, uh, my name is Vern Griffiths. Hello. Um, I don't have a dog in this fight. I, uh, I'm, not a, I'm not a denier or an alarmist or a, 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 a skeptic or an and anything really other than being a human on earth I, I i you know i have no information i have no expertise uh i am your literal man on the street i'm your figurative man on the street uh given that i'm sat on the sofa inside but you do um, you do have information because the information you've got is from the media and generally what everyone gets true yes i suppose so but i don't pay special close attention to um, uh, climatey stuff other than when we occasionally talk about it um, I don't uh, retain any of it um, so so I wouldn't say that I've yeah, got so we had this conversation well, we about, had, about a month ago and, and, it, yeah, and it was a long one but you, yeah. I don't think either of us can particularly remember what we said can no, we? It was, well I think a conversation rather than this conversation I think is, is close to the mark because we because there's there's no way we're going to recreate this there are things uh, I remember being learning a lot of stuff and uh, since then forgetting a lot of stuff so yeah. um, that's um, that sort of that sort of where, where I don't remember how it started because it went quite well didn't it <laughs> sort of well, it, well I think let's not worry about that so let's let's just start a new I think perhaps the one of the main things that we got into it was through um, I was talking about uh, this move to psychologize people who are skeptical about climate change and there's there's a somebody called Stefan or Stephen Lewandowski who's brought out three papers now I think where he uh, wants to label skeptics or deniers as he would probably prefer to call us as um, conspiracy theorists and um, uh, kooks kooks yeah and um, and and, and, it, and it's, it's a it's a paper that um, was jumped on by the Guardian and quite a lot of other media and, and it seems to have seeped in to the consciousness that that there's now a link between skeptics and slightly mad ways of thinking so so he, he made the link that yeah that there's there's um there, there's a correlation between denying 
denying climate change and believing in <coughs> uh, shady forces behind the death of Diana and, mm. and uh, you know yeah. the, moon, the moon landing never really happened. The twelve like lizards this. in suits in the darkened mm. room in the undisclosed location. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but but um, I think I think it was Stephen McIntyre who who went into uh, and and a few people that read climate audit and um, essentially found really that the sample that he used um, was was boiled down to, to four individuals who who could who you could say yeah okay they they they. They deny, or they are skeptical about climate change, and they and they believe all these silly other things. But out of the the thousand odd other people, right? So there was, he spoke to a thousand people. Is that as is is, is that what we're? Yeah, and um, the the weird thing about those thousand people is that they they were they were garnered from not from skeptical blogs because they Lewandowski sent out um, a questionnaire. And it's claimed that he sent that questionnaire to skeptical blogs um, to, to to get skeptical respondents, but they it actually went out to um, the other side, as it were. And so there's 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 a lot of questioning of whether the, the, the questionnaire was being played. This, of course, sounds like a conspiracy theory itself, something that the professor might like to study further. And so he did. In a follow-up paper called Recursive Fury, Lewandowski made no attempt to clarify or justify the questionable methods used in his first paper, um, because, you know, that would be silly. No, instead, he presented the angry objections to his questionable methods as final clinching evidence of unhinged conspiracy ideation. At least, though, this second paper was much more ethically watertight than the first, fully justifying the Wolfson Merit Award presented him by the Royal Society. Oh, hang on, no it wasn't. In fact, so unethical was it in publicly diagnosing named individuals, Frontiers in Psychology, who originally published the paper, withdrew it. But, you know, what do Frontiers in Psychology know? This kind of trash talk from a reputable science publisher is probably just further recursive conspiracist ideation. <laughs> You've fallen for it, hook, line and sink. Unethical. What? Unethical paper with people like that. Calling them nuts. Withdraw the paper. Withdraw the paper. Next you'll be asking me to send back my Wolfson Award, supplementing my salary to the tune of ten plus a thousand pounds every year. That's probably not a bad idea. What? Withdraw the paper. These people are fing deniers, I tell you. They're fing nut jobs. So we've got um deniers. Yeah. Uh which is uh the sort of um media spun version of skeptic yes yeah right so now on the other end of the scale you've got uh alarmists mm -hmm. who, so what do they call themselves you call them alarmists what do they call themselves i think they prefer to call themselves realists 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 okay okay right so um that's fair enough okay um and then so people like me i, I remember this this many people like me were lukewarmers is that right um, is, is that I think, I think you, that lukewarm has become a very specific oh, really? definition of, of you you believe this this and this. And oh, oh, right. Okay. So, so I, I, people like me just lay, lay, a lay person, ignorant, a lay person. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, cool. All right. So, um, so I, for the purposes of this, then, shall we use the nice version of both names? So, a realist and skeptic. Yeah, I mean, if you that's, like, yeah, you know, I mean that's slightly thing because realist has kind of got the word real in it, isn't it? Which is, I can see that that might rankle, but um, but also if you spend the whole thing calling them alarmist, no one's going to listen to it, are they? Do you know what I mean? If you want to try and get your point across to people who don't already agree with you, mm -hmm. there's no point calling them dickheads all the way through, is there? Yeah. See what I mean? Yeah. Do, do you agree? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. That's, that's okay, probably so a good idea. I, I would probably find 
myself, setting alarmists and stopping myself. That's sure, but, well, I think that's fine. You know, but I think as long as we see you making a concerted effort, I think we'd all appreciate that. Mm. Um, so what's, what was interesting what you were saying about um, Lewandowski, uh, his paper uh, tying people to uh, conspiracy theorists, because I remember when I was a kid, um, that's how everyone talked about people who were into recycling. Mm. Do you know what I mean? People mm. who were, yeah, I mean, like, you know, yeah. primary school was full of uh, recycled toilet paper jokes. Do you know what I mean? It was full of it. And, you know, um, the sort of tree hugging, um, uh, hippie type were the, 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 the you know, the butt of all the jokes. They were the weirdos mm. because we weren't paying any attention to that as we uh, CFC'd our armpits uh, daily, you know. Um, so do you think that's... So in the way that, that that arc has gone, so they've gone from being the kooks to being... Um, it's just received wisdom now. That's what's... You know, we're killing the planet, the, the oceans are rising, everything's getting hotter, and um, we're all going to end up living on the top of Ben Nevis, right? So is the, So do you think... Um, that the, the same arc will be as as more information is is uh, released and and looked at in a broader sense. Um, is that you know what you're hoping the the, the arc will be for the um, for the skeptic side that that becomes that we don't need to be so alarmed um, that there's um, that we aren't weird we aren't crazy we just think these things and these things are all right things to think yeah because I think what what's happened over 20 years is is it's not what Lewandowski had said there, there isn't a big conspiracy going on you know there, I mean, he, it, it, it's, the charge is laid that a, a, a lot of people on the sceptical side think, think that the whole thing's a hoax well, I don't think that's true. I don't think a lot of people think it's a hoax. They think that um, it's become a gravy train, that this um, it's become an industry, and that there are many careers, many careers, um, uh, with, with an investment in it, and now can't afford to turn back. Um, so in that sense it's not a hoax it's just something that's grown over the decades in, into into um, sort of industry a, a, a perilous a per I, I, th I, 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 I would suspect that there are lots of people in the realist side of the argument who, who, who do have doubts um, but can't now admit them um uh, and 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 they're just going to go down with this ship when when it comes, um, but they but they're hanging on until that time. Okay, but I mean, the ship is still a long way off, though, isn't it? Do, do you know what I mean? It kind of feels like well, yeah, the, the, yeah, the, 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 the wisdom, is, is, you know, the the received wisdom is, is it feels pretty entrenched, and the idea that. Um, you know, I, I mentioned this conversation to uh, us filming this to to um, a friend, and um, her immediate reaction was I was surprised at quite how um, vehement it was, and it was uh, why do you want to make something that's going to support people who want to destroy the planet? That's an almost verbatim quote. So I was like, well. If I'm 100% honest, I don't think this this video will will, will do that. <laughs> you know, I don't think it. You know, I think uh, with any luck, people will watch it and learn stuff from both sides of the argument, and um, and go, oh, I didn't realise that was the case. But I, you know, I don't think that we're going to. I don't think we're going to destroy the planet by making this video. Yeah, you know I, think, I, mean? I think. So, but what's what's interesting with that for me is that that she was like. Mm. It was, you know, it it was. I mean, right up there with the with, with the, the the proper bad things to be, you know, the 
you know, white hoods and, and, and um, you know, a van outside of primary school. I mean, like, like it was, you know, let's, well, we're just trying, I'm just trying to find out information from both sides. That's all, that's all it is. I'm not, you know, and then once I've got all the information, I'm not really in a position to do anything with it, in all honesty. Do you know, I'm just a bloke. Do you know what I mean? Other than I'll have my power, of my, my vote and all of that kind of business. But, you know, essentially. Yeah. Um, so I, I thought that, I, that was really, so going again, so that, that's how entrenched the, 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 yeah. the other side is. Yeah. The other side team is. Hmm. Um, so, so how do the skeptics argue against that? Well, and to make themselves seem more reasonable. How do you think uh, that is? And not essentially evil. Uh, yeah, or just hopelessly, mis laughably misguided. Or in the pay of um, Exxon and the Koch brothers and the um, oil industry in general. Sure. Um, yeah, well, the, well the, the main argument against that is that um, um, that there's the 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 concern in 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 realists' eyes is that um, so at some point down the line, twenty, thirty, fifty years, um, there's 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 going to be an uninhabitable planet for our children and our grandchildren, as they keep saying. Mm -hmm. um, so the the risk is in the future. But for people that I tend to agree with, um, there's already a lot of um, death going on um, and tragedies happening that we should do something about right now. And the, the, the main thing... That are climate related or just in general like wars and shit? Well, I mean... It's, it's not climate related, but this is the point. This is is that it's it's to do it's to do with poverty, but it's related in the sense that um, climate policies that are being implemented now are having an impact on the third world. So, um, in more way, in 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 African countries when they. Now, what, what did they, from our perspective, um, what's needed is, is they need an industrial revolution. They need to dig up their coal and they need industry. Um, the climate policies that are being enacted um, are not favouring this they, because of um, a concern about climate change, obviously. Um, so what what's happening is that um, the IMF are turning down applications for loans from Africa um, on the grounds that uh, to, to develop a, a coal industry means more CO two. So their 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 emphasis is is that Africa can somehow leapfrog the dirty industry straight into renewables so why so but the trouble with that is yeah, that yeah. There, are, there, there are people dying now and mm. developing coal and um, fossil fuel is as china has shown a much quicker way to raise millions of people up out of poverty um i think china's done something that raised 300 million people out of Poverty in the last fifteen years or so. Okay, so I get that that's because of coal. Okay, so I get that that's good, right? But if then the cost of all those people being lifted out of poverty is um, some sort of ecological harm, is isn't it worth trying to circumvent that, or at least isn't there a way of? Having a version of an industrial revolution that um, uh, that learns from our own mistakes, rather than well, guys, we've got sixty years of this, and it's going to be you know it's going to be pretty smoggy, and we just have to you know 
bite our tongues until it's until it's over and then eventually they'll they'll run out of coal because they'll send it to everyone we've all burned it and then they'll then they can start building the windmills do you know what i mean isn't there some sort of way that not that we necessarily skip to windmills but that we uh, uh revolutionize their industry in 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 a way that shows we've learned something in the last 150 years yeah that that, that should be that should be built in to to a plan, but to but is it being? Is my it's not being. What 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 um. What, what the fact now is is that okay? There, there might be um, novel uh, ways of generating energy down the line: thorium nuclear reactors, um, and um, just better, more efficient renewable forms. But we haven't got there yet, and we're not likely to get there for decades. Um, so, in those decades, are we prepared to sacrifice um, Africa's development to these to these goals? So that's why the, I think there's a lot of questioning of you know. Then it shifts onto questioning the science behind. Um, well, are we really, um, is coal and fossil fuels really the cause of um, climate change and a rise in t temperature, global warming? And then you start ask asking questions about, um, well, actually, it looks like for over a decade, possibly since 1998, there hasn't really been any warming while we've increased our fossil fuels fuel use enormously and certainly China has you know it's, it's been building coal fired power stations like nobody's business but the temperature seems to have remained flat okay. fairly flat it's rate is raised slightly but so not 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 in the way that it was predicted by the models the computer models in the in the 90s right so so your side of the argument then is, or the skeptic side of the argument is then, all that's been going on. There's been no mm, specific or noticeable change in the last twenty odd years um, since about ninety eight. So, okay, so um, so you're so you're wrong. So what's the realist version of that when faced with that data? Uh, they they argue that the well <laughs> this is the trouble some of, some don't like to acknowledge that there's been a pause or hiatus um, there's there's an argument going on now you know be between them that uh, um, you know we should acknowledge it or we do acknowledge it and and, and some. Don't. Um, uh, well, uh, uh, okay. So, but, but 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 one thing that they've they've done is moved moved the argument from air temperature to ocean temperature. So, as far as I gather, a, a lot of the um, initial alarm was to do with rising air temperature and surface air temperature. An argument emerged a couple of years ago, three or four years ago, that um, it seems now that uh, the oceans are heating. Um, so that that was one way that they sought to explain this apparent pause in air temperature, that the heat was going into the oceans. Um, so. And so, so from what's wrong with that? If that, because that seems to that make to me from the outside that makes us that makes sense. Yeah, well, it 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 may well make sense, but but I mean, it's 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 bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> Let's break that down. So, um, so it seems like things are changing. Stuff is changing in the planet, and. Um, yeah, why do you say that? Why do you say well, it seems like things are changing? Well, because that's the information I'm given. Do you know what I mean? So, uh, are we talking about um, 
extreme weather becoming more frequent? Well, these these are the things that are just spoken about in, in the news, right? Yeah. And I, I'm wary of saying yes, and where? But um, uh, you know that that those are things we'll talk about. And I don't I don't know that even I, as a layperson, necessarily believe all or, or believe that. Um, uh, you know, I think things are monitored more closely now than ever before. So you're going to have a lot more information. So guess what? There's a lot more information. Do you know what I mean? I think that makes that's just I think that's common sense. Um, but if for a moment the, the, the realists are right and um, the planet is getting hotter and this is going to cause terrible devastation, right? What, what's the skeptic side of the argument if they're right? What if they're right? Do you know what I mean? What, what, right. what, what are your ways of combating all that stuff? If it's not, um, what do you call it, alternate... Renewables. Yeah, renewable, there you go. Um, re renewable energy sources. Um, so what What are your solutions? If that's their solution, they've gone, we think this is happening, and so we say solar, windmill, water power, whatever it is, riding your bike to us, tell you, whatever it might be. Um, what's, what's, your, what's your take on that then? Where, where do you, what are your solutions to the, the, the problems that, they're ha that are happening? If it turns out they're right, and those problems are happening. Um, the thing to do would be to adapt rather than um, immediately impose, you know, impossible targets, CO2 reduction targets, you know, and, and, and to go at it with such speed. The, 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 that's the argument, is, is that, um, uh, okay, um, there's a risk. Um, it 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 can be dealt with. It can be. Um, Sorry, there's a risk of what? There's a risk of you know uh, the, the the planet becomes um, ravaged with impossible weather, and um, this will result in climate refugees escaping, you know, droughts and famines, you know, this, this is the argument, the extreme argument of um, the worst effects of climate change. So, um, and what, and you just think that's balls, or do you... Well, I, I, I do think it's balls, right. but if it, if it wasn't balls, then the argument from our side would be that um, what well, we've we've been dealing with extreme weather ever since we've been here. That the sort of what being that we know human is is coping with your environment and building a roof. Um, and there's always all we've ever done is adapt. And, and we should have a more robust attitude to it and, and have confidence that we will adapt as these things of, um, um, arise. That sounds like we all end up living in domes. Do you know what I mean? It's like um, with, with a completely devastated, um, uh, scorched earth outside. Yeah. You know, Judge Dredd kind of. We we live in a. Um, well, the odd the odd thing about that is that um, because of um, increases in CO two output over the last hundred years, um, the planet has greened. Um, and CO two is plant food. Mm. And if you look at the Sa the Sahal, um, isn't that the Indian at the bottom of the hill? That sounds. <laughs> it's got greener. What's the Sahara? The Sahara, the Sahara Desert. You know that that region, the Sahara is called. I think. Oh, is it? Okay. Um, I don't know exactly where it goes from and to, but <laughs> the Sahara is the main part of it. I would think. Um, it's uh, it's greening. 
there's more green, lush vegetation there now than there ever has been, and it's down to CO2. It's there's, there's, you can see a photograph of the Earth 30 years ago, black and white, and uh, and and one now, and it's a lot greener. <laughs> Right, so the colour photograph is no, much greener, much greener than the black and white photograph. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you have it. I think that's that's you know you can draw a line. Um, but but the, the thing is though is that um, that you know you said there's going to be scorched earth and everything. Well, it's not. It, it, the facts are not proving that that's the way it's going. So the greenhouse effect is a thing that exists. We people say we should stop using CFCs and we did and the thing mended or at least stopped increasing yeah um so isn't that like a big win for the other side and they are uh, they away looking at stuff um well, the, you know just sh that they showed concern yeah, and the, yeah there was concern people did something about it i mean at the time it, i mean it was all kicking off about 1990 or late 80s early 90s at the time, uh, you know, I, I joined the Green Party. I was a member of the Green Party and, and um, got into all that stuff. And but um, looking looking back on it now, I think that um, the move into environmental politics. Um, was was a, uh, strategic because because the left was collapsing, and so here was um, here was here was an opportunity for the left to continue in some form. Um, the. But people like James Dellingpole like to say that um, uh, environmentalists are watermelons. They sort of green on the outside and red on the inside. They sort of m Marxists whose um, you know purpose collapsed and, and so therefore found a new purpose in environmentalism. And it's all very, very sinister in, in that they, they want they want world government. Well, I, I don't. It, I mean that 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 is sort of conspiracy mongering. Um, I don't I don't think it's I don't think it's anything as conscious as as that. I think it's just that um, there was just a sense that uh, this is interesting. Th th these are new um, kind of threats and and um and, you know we the working class is is not the um force it once was and so it's all very confusing now and we're not quite sure where we stand politically but here we have a black and white issue that we can that we can make a moral ju judgment on and so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna make that judgment and so the the shift started to happen and um and i think a lot a lot of things that uh, have occurred since the late 80s early 90s can be put down to that so the growth of um you know what's called now the social justice warrior kind of the left um is 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 all about identity politics and 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 that and that was another aspect that the left went into was was identity politics environmentalism they they were all issues on which you could make a moral um kind of grandstanding case um and it seemed to me or looking back now that what was once an, an anti-authoritarian left started to shift into its opposite, into an authoritarian left. Um, and 
And this is what's confusing now is is that you know I see all all of all of all of these things, and I think you might agree on a lot of this to do with identity politics, is that they are they are they are beginning to be conservative and reactionary and shutting down free speech and um basing everybody on their colour or their gender, which is exactly what the left was trying not in, in decades gone by to take any notice of. But now it's all about that. So it's, it's become weirdly its opposite. That, um, uh, you know, we must make judgments on, on, on colour and gender and, and you know, the, the, it's, it, the left has lost its way to a massive degree. And I, can, I can remember reading Stephen Fry and being in Ben Alton and alternative comedy in the 80s and thinking, you know, reading Stephen Fry when he was talking about the Thatcher philistinism and coming out with the stuff that. Um, Money is the yardstick of of, of everything, and um, and you, you read Stephen Fry's book. There's much more to life than that, and that's very as a the philistine reductionist uh, viewpoint, and um, we need to fight against it. And I I like that because it seemed like it was fighting against a reductionist philosophy that wanted to reduce everything to you know its price and didn't consider that there was anything beyond that that could be valued in any way so um, you know so, so so the BBC would would be um, abolished because um, it, 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 it was it was being funded by taxpayers and I'm not, I'm not making a profit so get rid of that it didn't have any value so Stephen you know, when Stephen Fry and other people like that were, were, were arguing for other values and saying well it's worthwhile because it enriches these other areas of life I considered that to be sort of anti-authoritarian because there was this authoritarian streak coming from Thatcher in the right way but it seems now that the left has become the, the authoritarians in this and telling us how to live and what to think and shutting down debates and saying if you if you hold these views um, you're evil um, and right wing it's, it's not right wing to question um, anything authority, authority. Mm. How does that feed back into uh, the climate argument then? So, um, it seems to me all that the sceptics are doing is cherry picking. Now, it's made out that cherry picking is, is, a, is a bad thing to do, as if just choosing a tiny bit of the science and saying, well, you've got that bit wrong, you know, and that's made out to be a bad thing to do. Well, no, that's how science works, is, is, is you look at the specific things and, well, you've got that bit wrong redo that and oh no, you've got that bit wrong as well we you know it just goes on cherry picking is entirely a scientific procedure um but, but, so, uh, but, but, but is there an argument that. then saying well you just you know if we've got 80 things right and 20 things wrong can't you yes we have to concentrate on the 20 things but you can't ignore the 80 things either can you is that their argument then? yeah it's entirely you know, that's fine saying that there's a consensus on something, but um, I suppose it depends how important the 20 things are, isn't it? Yeah, I suppose it does, but it's, yeah, it, it is, it is actually, yeah, it, it is the importance of, of um, I mean, one of, one of the poster bodies of uh, on the climate debate is the hockey stick graph. Um, Michael Mann and others um, published a paper in 1998 um, and 
the, 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 the graph that came from that paper went into the IPCC's um, report, IPCC. Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, is a, a, an international Panel. Panel. Is it a panel on climate change? Yeah, climate change. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and it was used quite a lot in that, and, and, and the, it seemed like the reason it was used is because it was it was alarming, and dramatic. It's and dramatic. So I was just saying, it was like this all through history. It was like this, and then we came along and poof. Yeah. So yeah. Essentially, yeah. a thousand years of not much happening. The last hundred years, cor correlating to industrial the birth of the Industrial Revolution, it suddenly shoots up because we start spewing CO2 into the atmosphere through fossil fuel usage. And um, so, so a man called Steve McIntyre, um, who'd been used to, to dealing with hockey stick graphs and being suspicious about them through his work as a, as a mining consultant, I think, or something like that. Mm. Um, when he saw the hockey stick being used all over the place that year, he, his suspicions were aroused. He said, well, usually when hockey sticks are used, um, they're trying to sell you something. They're trying to sell you either a tale of, you know, booming s stock, you know, that kind of invest in us yeah. kind of scenario, sure. or um, or, or you know, something to be scared of. Yeah. You know, there's, there's there's catastrophe around the corner, and so so he, he he has a background in statistics and took it apart, but took it apart in such a way that um, he he even showed at one point that parts of it were upside down. I need to explain that further. <laughs> there's, there's, there's a book that you can read called The Hockey Stick Illusion, which I've lent to a mutual friend of ours, and I'm not sure he's read, and that was about two years ago. Mm -hmm. um, but it goes into all of this, how the, the principal component analysis of which produced that shaped graph um, is, n is not the most robust method to use. Um, it, it's, it, it's, it's quite, I, when, you, when, when you read the book, you, you'll get it, but I, I can't remember the science that well. I, I, I remember one particular section of it is that using that statistical um, method will produce a hockey stick shaped graph um, no matter what kind of data you feed into it so even if you feed into it red noise I think it's called which is random data what will come out if you if you use this statistical method will be a hockey stick shape um, so that's how um, so how's that flimsy that method is we still need to be focusing on it don't we we still need to be working on it between now and let's say it's let's say it's 50 years we need to be working to working towards averting that yeah so for instance one of the arguments that Matt Ridley has is or I think it's Matt Ridley is that instead of spending um, 80 billion on currently inefficient wind farm technology you take just a fraction of that 80 billion and pour it into research and development it's just you know the cost benefit analysis points towards that being a much more a, a system that will produce success um, in, in, in the most optimal way. So, I mean, I, I, I fully accept the answer might be, I don't know, we haven't researched and developed it yet, but research and development into what? Into, into, into how to produce energy, into, into renewables, into nuclear fusion. 
um, and, and stuff that we don't even know about yet. Blue sky research. Okay. Well, at least can we have blue sky research if it's all drained? Yeah, I, I guess that's the fuck. You know, I, think that's, I think that's the problem. But <laughs> maybe that's the point. Well, they're all wrong about it. <laughs> maybe that's the point. Um, <laughs> um, so one of the sceptic arguments then is, is that um, is that there's not enough research going on. There's not enough. We it's like. We, well, we've been told. Let me get the end of my question. This is the end. This is what we've been told to focus on. This is the problem. This is how we're fixing it, and we're ignoring everything else, and that's a problem. That's what yeah, I think. I think you know. Th 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 there's there's an argument that comes from skeptics, which is, well, can we at least talk about where is the best, you know, or how best we can spend the money? But you know, something like Bjorn Lomborg. Who wanted to set up um, a research institute in Australia to ask that question, uh, just purely to research whether you know spending the money in this way might produce more better results for for the same amount of money than in this other way. Um, just to just to ask the question, he um, he couldn't do it. They 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 kicked up a fuss in Australia. And um, the government was going to kind of donate four million dollars to it, buckled, and the research institute was scrapped because um, they just didn't even want the, 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 the question to be asked. Why is that? Because that all the money. They well, because they, because they because they um, they just they just think he's a denier. And so they, they just won't even countenance. They just think he's evil. It's just you know we we just won't have it. We won't we won't be asked questions of. It, you know, and so he's gone. He's gone elsewhere now, and I'm not even sure if if he's been successful in this other attempt to set it up. I'm not sure about that. Um, but uh, you know, he, he, all, all he, all Bjorn Lomborg is about. He calls himself a sceptical environmentalist, and, 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 he, and he's just kind of, he's an economist. And he, he just says, well, perhaps if we spent, you know, a hundred million in Africa on um, malaria, malaria prevention, in, you know, now in this way, um, the net result of that is this amount of lives being saved um, as opposed to investing it in you know building wind farms now today um, and we you know how, how, how many lives is that going to save and over what period and how much is it going to cost and just just looking into all the economics of going down that road or going down this road in each case and um, no, you know, no, we don't want you asking those questions. You can't have your institute. You know. You're evil. Shut up. So that—that's what um, is. It, 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 it's, it, it points to this notion of there being a defensiveness in in this in this um, you know what's become uh, an industry the, the climate change industry there's a defensiveness there where where they where they panicked by questions being asked of them and want to shut down debate and um, and you kind of think, well, why, 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 why won't you even debate it? Why? And you, can't, you know, you can't fail to conclude that they they've got careers to protect and mortgages to pay. 
in the meantime, though, you know, there's um, there's there's pensioners unable to pay their bills in Britain because you know we 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 have the 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 subsidies for green electricity generation causing huge rises in in domestic heating bills in in the UK and and pensioners dying because they can't afford to pay their bills over the winter and I don't I don't know what specifically what the figures are but you know there's there's thousands as far as I get that um, so you know yeah protect your career but bear in mind the consequences of you protecting your career you know and not not just the pensioners in Britain but like you say the, the developing world being denied loans to invest in in their um, digging up their coal and um, stuff like that, and, and there was the whole biofuels fiasco where you know it seemed great, you know we'll 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 apportion a, a, a lot of land growing crops so that we can convert them into fuels for car usage because um, doing it that way around is is much. Clean, clean, cleaner in the sense of the net output of CO2 in some way. Um, but the consequence of that was that this huge amount of land was given over to, to these types of crops. Food prices went up, millions starved and died. And that, and that was in a, you know, a green policy. That they had only twelve years ago, they were all for it. Now, now, they they see the error of their ways, and you know, skeptics were saying it twelve years ago, but they were evil to say it then. But now the Greens have come round to it and realised that they were wrong. Um, you could say the same thing about DDT and Rachel Carson in in the fifties. She wrote a book called Silent Spring, saying that. Um, DDT, which was being used to eradicate malaria all around the world, um, was was uh, killing out, uh, impeding the. Yeah, I can't remember. In some way, affecting the eggs of birds, so that the bird population was plummeting. Um, DDT was slowly banned. You know, I think it took decades to happen, but it was slowly banned. And it's estimated that hundreds of millions of lives that might have been saved by the use of that DDT over those decades were lost because of this worry about birds' eggs. Now, I think there's been a, a recent re-examination of, of that data about the effect on birds and it's found being found to be unreliable it's so this kind of panic of, of environmental degradation caused mil hundreds of millions of human deaths if you want to look at it in that way you know GDT was banned they could have been using it they could have stopped malaria they didn't there was that much deaths um, again, again, a, a catastrophic consequence of, of environmental policy. Uh, so questions need to be asked, just based based on our the previous experience of environmental scares. They, they don't want the questions asked at the moment. This is what's. Um, you know, and, and when you do ask questions, you get labelled as as a nut job, evil, even right wing, certainly. And um, is is that necessarily a right wing evil thing to to um, consider? To one debate, yeah. Hmm.